Okay, hello, 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 everybody. Uh, hope you're enjoying yourselves. Hope you're having a great day, and I hope you're ready for more uh, Phoenix. Well, sorry, my bad, not Phoenix, right? Miles Edgeworth, rather. Uh, so here we are, uh, right at Mr. Doe's testimony. If you remember, I'll uh, well, not yesterday, two days ago, last stream, uh, we arrived over here. The president of the Republic of Zheng Fa landed in the middle of a park in either Japan or the U.S. I'm actually not sure where these games take place. And uh, as he was doing his speech, he was shot, and we were called to the scene to figure out uh, who done it, basically. And we've been walking around talking, and we have our latest clue is that we learned that the shooter, he was shot, the president, we don't know if he's... Uh, alive or dead yet, or how well off is he. So the shooter, we know that he had a red hoodie on, and that apparently he was injured in his left arm. So right before we ended the last stream, Detective Gumshoe went and found Mr. Doe, who is who was the only person who was at the right area in the crowd at the time, and is also um, hurt on his left arm. So that is, so now we're going to listen to his testimony. I think I remember his voice. And let's see, let's see how that get, where that gets us. I do understand that the person in the raincoat is suspicious. However, that doesn't mean that he was injured. I don't suppose you have proof. Clearly, my left arm is injured, but I can still use my right arm. When it was raining, I used an umbrella. I have no need for a raincoat. He didn't wear a raincoat. That's your claim? Yes, quite. Not everyone uses a raincoat for protection against the rain. I am an umbrella person, after all. I'm definitely a raincoat person. Umbrellas will hinder your movement. Well, shucks, I don't use raincoats or umbrellas. I've been listening to Dolly Parton all day to find to like try and get a better hang of the fucking southern accent. So all day I've just been listening to Dolly Parton music, which isn't that bad actually. I should have done that sooner. Come rain or snow, all I need is my trusty parka. This wasn't what I wanted to talk about. I do hope you understand. I'm not the assassin. Unfortunately, leaving a testimony unexamined goes against my principles. How troublesome. I am but a simple ice cream salesman. Oops. Okay. Is that an actual ice cream, though? It's super weird. Please excuse me. In the panic earlier, my wound seems to have t reopened. There's no mistaking that the owner of this raincoat is the assassin. Furthermore, the owner has an injured left arm. Mr. Doe, I shall reveal your true colors for all to see. Mr. Doe's testimony. Okay, so if you remember from previous games, we can press him. Okay, I understand the person in the raincoat is suspicious. That doesn't mean that he was injured. I don't suppose you have proof. Clearly my left arm is injured, but I can still use my right arm. When it was raining, I used an umbrella. I have no need for a raincoat. Interesting. Uh, well, we'll press... Learning from previous uh, games, I know that we got that we better press everything and see if there's something that directly contradicts. Well, he said that he wasn't. That he was using an umbrella. Let me just look at the photos here. Okay. Well. Oh no, this it wasn't raining here, so this is after the rain, so this doesn't help me actually. So it's pretty hard to tell from this. What else do we have? Got the newspaper article, steel samurai balloon, the tape recorder. Let me remember again what it says. My dearest friend, Nicole, the person passionately addresses. We got Payne and the head prosecutor talking. 
There's this fist in the air. Wait, what do they say exactly? Oh, they're talking about the Yadagorasu. So never mind. Uh, we have the bullet's trajectory. We have security plans. We have the assassin's revolver that we found. Photos, a red raincoat. And that's it. So, no, out of like the statements he said so far, I can't see anything. So I think we're definitely going to have to press everything. Hold it! So you admit that the person in the red raincoat is suspicious? Oh yes, I've been watching your investigation from the audience seating. An assassin? Oh, how dreadful. Okay, not much there to work with. That doesn't mean that he was injured. I don't suppose you have proof. Oh, actually I do have proof. I guess I can present the raincoat here? I'll press just in case though. Hold it! What if I had evidence to prove that he was injured? You certainly seem confident. I expected no less of you, Mr. Prosecutor. Hmm. You know of me. Uh, it's because you're famous, sir. Maybe he read about you in the newspaper. I have been observing your investigation. This man is clearly suspicious. If I expose his lies, I should be able to uncover the assassin's true identity. Okay, so yeah, I'm pretty sure that I need to present... Like he's, like Edgy said, I think I... Uh, well, I do have proof and I think I need to present it. I believe it is the red raincoat with blood inside, so it was probably... So yeah, the shooter was probably injured. OBJECTION! Objection! Mr. Doe, you seem to be a very cautious person. However, today seems to be different because you left this behind. You must be mistaken. That does not belong to me. Or perhaps you have evidence that proves otherwise? Mr. Doe, is your injury alright? The wound seems to have opened. Indeed, it is uh, quite troublesome. Yes, I'm sure it is. You have my deepest sympathies. After all, you would have escaped with your wound. You would have escaped had your wound not opened up. What do you mean? There's no mistaking that the one who wore this raincoat was injured. And I can prove that the person was you. With this! Oh, <laughs> I like how the ice cream is uh, sweating. That's really cute. On the inside of this raincoat, there is a small blood stain. It's the blood of the assassin! Oh, yeah. He's nervous now. That's a cool ice cream cone, though, I'm not gonna lie. Attacking the prison is a serious crime, pal. You'll cause an international incident. No matter how long you kept you keep silent, your true nature will soon come to light. A blood test will settle this. The blood from the raincoat and the blood from your bandaged arm. I have all the evidence I need. Why don't you just admit it? You're the assassin who attacked the president! I am not the assassin. You don't know when to give up. If this was a game of chess, you would have been checkmated a long time ago. Admit your defeat gracefully! He seems completely unfazed. I suppose I have no choice. I'll admit it. Indeed, the raincoat is mine. He confessed, sir! Arrest him! Arrest him! However, that does not mean I shot the president. Well, we'll show you soon how it actually does prove it. What's that, pal? P Prosecutor Edgeworth, all you have proven is that I wore the raincoat. What sort of crime is that? Oh, I'm going to show you what sort of crime. Mr. Doe's testimony, part two. 
I'm no assassin. I'm just a simple ice cream salesman. All I did was put on that red raincoat and listen to the president's speech. It surprised me to see the bodyguards take action just before the gunshot rang out. Everyone in the audience immediately tried to escape, creating a state of panic. Wait, what was he talking about? The guards, like, uh, acting before the gunshot or something? That might be my key here. Are you satisfied this time? His story is getting fishier by the minute! He's really suspicious! Declaring at me won't help! We've got evidence! Here! Look at this guy in the red raincoat! That's gotta be the assassin! Oh, I see. That is clearly not me. Prosecutor Edgeworth, please consider this carefully. Woo! Weru! In chat! How you doing, buddy? How's it going? Please consider this carefully. Was I really the one who wore a red raincoat? Logic, yeah. Well, he did say... I'm, I wonder what's his angle here. Because he did say... Like, he said that that... Uh, raincoat belonged to him, but he also said they used an umbrella. Or maybe he gave up on the umbrella thing. Whether he was or was not, the person in the photo can only be Mr. Doe. Oh, welcome aboard, Drops! Good to see you here early. Just in time, too. We started, uh, not, not so long ago. So we didn't miss much. Uh, basically, what we got Mr. Doe to say so far, we got him to admit that the raincoat we found with blood in it is his. That was stuffed underneath the ice cream stand. But he says that even though the red coat is his, that the person in the photo with the, with the red hoodie and the laser sight is not him. So he just gave us the second part of his testimony. We're going to need to figure this out. How's your day, by the way, Drops? But why? This man's self-confidence. And intensity. Actually, not early. I had diarrhea. Oh, you skipped Latin. Bringing Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Nice. The new season? Or are you watching from the beginning? I love that show. Uh, sorry you had diarrhea, though, buddy. That sucks. I'm just doing this. Well, like I said, I th he said something about like the guards, the bodyguards, acting before the shots were fired or something. So that was kind of suspicious. But I'm going to press everything up to that just in case. Just got the new season. Yeah, yeah. Show is pretty good. I binged the shit ton of it. Like, I really did. Since like season 3 just got to Netflix and I already saw it and my girlfriend didn't, then I'm watching it with her and I can pretty much like recite the lines. Yeah, pretty much. Well, it's the same creator. If you liked uh, Parks and Rec, it's the same creators. It's uh, Dan Gore, and I forgot the name of the other producer. But yeah, it's the same kind of vein. Like, you know, wor workplace sitcom uh, with cops, which is just fun. Chris and Sandberg are great, and so, yeah, yeah. Gina Linetti is great. They're all really good. It's just a really, really good show. Very enjoyable, I agree. Oh, then after you're done with uh, with Brooklyn, I highly recommend Parks and Rec. Highly recommend. I think you'll really enjoy it too. It's a great, great show. So, hold it! Oh, yeah. Definitely Diaz. Uh, I don't know. I kind of got a tie between Diaz and uh, Amy for my waifu. My Brooklyn waifu now that I think about it. Oh, no, wait, there's Gina. Oh, yeah. D uh, definitely Gina. Her character evolution is so great. Well, if you're at the new series... Actually, I'm not sure. I think there's a season on right now that I might have not seen. I might have not seen, like, the very latest. Or not all of it or something. I'm not sure. And, yeah, Hold is great. It's actually really great how you see, like, they specifically went against... Every uh, character's like ethnical stereotype, and that's really great. Like with Holt and with um, I forgot Cruz's the lieutenants, not the lieutenant, the the sergeant's character, and they're just, like they really went against it. 
and that's really great. And like, not just the racial, like the woman, like Diaz is the woman, but she's like the opposite of fragile. And women are like their stereotypes, let's say that they're like very fragile and dumb. And Amy is like the smartest person on the show. Diaz is the toughest person on the show. History of discrimination is part of it, but it's not forced. Oh, definitely, yeah. For being black. And when they do push it, they know how to do it like in a, in a funny way, which is great. Like when you see the flashbacks of him in the, in the 70s, it's really great. Or when you see like parts of him like at home or whatever, it's really, really good. I gotta say, yeah, Holt is one of my favorites. It's really hard to choose though. But yeah, speaking of waifus, I'd say Gina all day, every day. Yeah, him and Kevin are adorable. They're both great actors too. Real love them both. Uh, okay, I could talk about Brooklyn all day because it's a great show, but let's get on with it. As an ice cream salesman, you must know quite a bit about ice cream. But of course, ask me anything you wish. C curses! I don't know anything about ice cream. Hmm. So, um, what's the most important thing about making ice cream? Mr. Edgeworth! The most important thing about making ice cream is honor. Honor? To make ice cream? Without honor, ice cream is nothing more than sweet ice. Do, do you understand? I'm just a simple ice cream salesman. Okay. Well, let's put that ring on and listen to the president's speech. I think it's after this that the important part is. Why did you use a raincoat instead of an umbrella? Nanos and drops the Brooklyn Nine Nine review podcast. <laughs> Talk about minute 14 of episode. Yeah, pretty much. I could pretty much do it like that too. It's a great show. What can I say? Uh, okay. Is it strange to wear a raincoat on a rainy day? Well, you said earlier that you use umbrellas, so it's kind of weird that you like. It's strange to purposefully wear a raincoat when you can't get your arm into it. If both my hands were occupied, I wouldn't be able to serve ice cream. Why didn't you mention that in your testimony earlier? I'm terribly sorry. It must have completely slipped my mind. After all, I had just gone through all that. All that? The shooting of the president, of course. Surprised me to see the bodyguards take action just before the gunshot. Yeah, that's the suspicious part for me. So I'm gonna press it and see if uh, anything comes out. Hold it! So the bodyguards reacted before the gunshot went off? Yes, the bodyguards moved first. The one on the left side of the stage in particular. You saw it all quite clearly. I have good eyesight. Really? With a monocle? The names are written on the upper left of the security plan. The bodyguard on the left side would be... Mr. Rook. That is correct. A Mr. Mr. Ethan Rook, I believe. Perhaps he noticed the light from the laser pointer? That man is no ordinary individual. The from the actions, I don't believe that the bodyguards were amateurs. This man isn't an ordinary individual either. Please add that statement to your testimony. Yeah, that's that's pretty weird. Drops, I agree. I had a feeling that this... Okay, let's see exactly what he says here and press that too. The man on the left side of the stage was exceptionally quick. A Mr. Ethan Rook, as I recall. Yeah, if he knows... Okay, well, we found the security detail plan in a bag along with a murder weapon. Well, the attempted murder weapon. So if he knew the name, it could only be that he saw it on the fucking security detail, right? I'm gonna press it just in case, but I'm pretty sure I know what to do here. Hold it! 
So the bodyguard on the left was faster. He reacted in just an instant. His response time was superb. I believe his name was, was Ethan Brooke. I see. He had plenty of time to react. Not necessarily. His expression never changes. Hmm. The audience immediately tried to escape, creating a state of panic. Okay. Well, this is definitely not it. I really feel like I need to present the security detail here, because something is just... I don't know. It doesn't add up. Or maybe... Well, it's almost always that when they add a statement, that's the one I need to present evidence on. I'm just not positive right now. If I need to use... Whoops. If I need to use this photo... Or the security detail... The plans... Yeah, the thing is, I was thinking the plans, but then because, like, they were talking as they showed them, I was thinking maybe it's not relevant? But I wouldn't put it past this game. Bodyguard's positions, top secret information... Well, it says top secret, so how would he know? He really shouldn't be able to know... Like, the name. Turns to the audience, Rook takes Knightley's place... Maybe this is why he thought, because he saw the plans and he knew that Rook was supposed to take Knightley's place, and that's why he thought that he would act, even though that's not what happened. Well, there's no aspect, no facet, no moment in life that can be improved by pizza, as the amazing Daria once said. So yeah, I get you. I, I can't. I think I always, I'm always craving pizza too. Drops, even when I don't actively think about it. Okay, let's just do this. OBJECTION! It seems you aren't just a simple ice cream salesman, after all. Of course I love Daria. How can you not? Daria fucking, you know, embodies a generation, a specif and specifically like... a group of, uh, from that, from our generation. So yeah, definitely. You think too highly of me, Prosecutor Edgeworth? Oh yeah, let's let's go for it, man. Totally. We could discuss both. We could do a, a double whammy: uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine and a Daria review. Daria is really brilliant, though. Like really, really brilliant. Really, like some very, very much a product of its time in the best sense. Uh, it was so, so smart. Such a smart show. Why would a simple ice cream salesman... Know the names of... Know the name of the president's bodyguard! Yeah, Mike Judge is great. I haven't seen Silicon Valley, though. Well, a, an episode here and there, but I haven't, like, really seen it yet. But I heard it's really good, too. Right? Silicon Valley, that's his, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. King of the Hill. Yeah, again, it's on my list. I'll watch it, like, properly one day. I've seen, like, an episode here, episode there, and it's also really, really good. King of the Hill is also, like, I find it, find it really amazing how it, like, how you just chose, like, a great um, group of people to focus on. It's just, like, the kind of television that you don't see enough of, of like, middle America, and it's really not, like, derogatory, you know? Like, it makes fun of them, but it's laughing with them, not at them. Dang it, Bobby! Oh, I'll tell you what. But it's really a great show. And uh, it's really it's really wholesome in a nice sense that you wouldn't expect from Judge. But it's that what what makes it so great when a man who is so like non wholesome and a lot of his other stuff does something that is really like wholesome and family oriented in a way. Well, I'd say as much family oriented as the Simpsons are, for example. Which is still like a family show. The name of the bodyguard? Surely you jest. Didn't you say their names just a moment ago? Mr. Knightley and Mr. Rook, correct? No, I did not. OBJECTION! 
This is a diagram of the security plants. We learned their names from this. Shows the follies of the classic conservative paradigm without making their character. It's not just like unlikable. I think that like people who belong to that paradigm can still watch this show and enjoy it, which really makes it a great show. Like in my idea. Like if you can make fun of people without offending them in spe specifically in a show like that, that's not like, you know, pure satire or something. It's uh it's really great. It's really a mark of a great writer, I think. Or a great showrunner in this case. However, please look. Only their shirt names are written here. Exactly. <gasps> You distinctly said Ethan Rook. How did you know his full name when we did not? I love how his ice cream is the one that sweats here. Well, again, I never really watched it proper. I only watched like an episode here and there. So nobody really got, like, I never really got tired of her. But I did hear from other people as well that she was kind of uh, a bummer. And that they didn't like her, but from the amount I've watched, she was she was okay. I mean, she was a nice mom type character, a lot like uh, Marge Simpson again. Like she's the mother who takes care of everybody. She's kind of uh, more uh, worrisome. She doesn't want anybody to get her, which is a cute uh, archetype, I think, to work with. That's pretty weird, sir. What do you know his name? Explain yourself. That was merely a slip of the tongue. It's true! This guy is the assassin! Hey, young lady, you're being a little hasty. The reason I knew his name is quite simple. What? I'm an acquaintance of uh, Mr. Rooks. What? He and I have a bit of a connection. His is a name that I will never forget. Mr. Edgeworth, he's just telling a big fat lie! This is not a lie. I'm just a simple ice cream salesman. And an acquaintance of Ethan Brooks. Objection! In that case, let's just ask the Brook himself about this. Whether or not he's acquainted with his dubious ice cream salesman. As you wish. However, that may prove difficult now. He's currently busy with the president's security, after all. Besides, even if I am not an acquaintance of Mr. Brooks... Already planning his way up. Does that prove that I fired the gun? OBJECTION! If you aren't the assassin, then why did you remove the, your raincoat? It was a little hot, and the rain had stopped. I wanted to air out the wound. Is there a problem with that? They're not like talking about the fact that if he's not an acquaintance of Ethan Rook, then he shouldn't be able to know his name. And that, well, actually, no, I guess it doesn't tie. Well, it's weird, but it doesn't tie him specifically to the security detail plans, I suppose. Oh, I just can't seem to corner him. Mr. Edgeworth, uh, what are you doing? I, I kind of forgot Payne's voice for a bit. Uh, hurry up and arrest him. Uh, that man's so suspicious. Uh, I'd even arrest him myself. Arrest him without evidence? How could I do such a thing? Come on, Mr. Mr. Edgeworth! Can't you do something? Breaking news. The criminal is on the verge of escaping the prosecutor. Oh, speaking of which, Super Drops, I've been listening, I took your advice, I've been listening to Dolly Parton all day long. Just getting ready for doing uh, Nicole's voice. So I hope I'm doing it a bit better today. Uh, oh dear, they're already treating me like a criminal. Uh, I understand. Since I've been suspected this far, it seems I will have to tell the truth. 
Also, doesn't it kind of seem like he has a zipper line across his face? Is he going to remove it, Freakazoid style, and we'll see, like, his... Is he wearing, like, a mask? I actually did find it helpful. I actually did. I watched, some, I watched like, a quick interview with her and I listened to her songs, which I haven't in a while. And it wasn't... It was not unenjoyable. Uh, she has some nice songs. I didn't like all of them, obviously. Also, apparently... Either he's like Two Face, or oh, he could be like Two Face actually too. I was thinking maybe he'll like zipper down his face, and he's actually somebody else. But yeah, also apparently Dolly Parton like released a new album like two weeks ago. It's pretty bad. I listened to parts of it. It's pretty bad, but like some of her classics are really good. The truth. What is he up to? I saw another person wearing a red hood. Of course, that's the truth. What? What? Surely, that was the person who was in the photo. I first noticed him right before the speech when it was still raining. He caught my eye because his raincoat was the same color as mine. In his hand, I saw a laser pointer with a light aimed directly at the president. Oh, that's why the ice cream is like that. Good point. Unless the ice cream is going to zip her down, too. Which I'm going to... That's going to be amazing if it is. It can't be. There was another person wearing a red hood. I knew that if I wore the red raincoat, I'd be mistaken for the assassin. That is why I took off the raincoat. Objection! Objection! You saw an assassin wearing the same color hood as yours. Hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a nice coincidence? Uh, that's what I expected you would say, which is why I did not testify as such. Prosecutors and the police are a suspicious lot. I knew that nobody would believe me. At the moment of the incident, the assassin was very close to the prosecutor. Prosecutor? I only arrived after the incident. No, he's talking about pain, obviously. Not you, Prosecutor Edgeworth. That Prosecutor over there. Uh, me? Yes, you should be visible in that photo. And did he Here, right in front of the person in the red hood. This is... That's me, alright. What's your point? What's this man driving at? I've been observing your investigation this entire time, Prosecutor Edgeworth. And I've noticed something quite odd. Something strange? Something quite odd? Hmm. It seems you still haven't noticed this contradiction yet. A contradiction? In this photo, the people who can be seen are the Chief, Mr. Payne, and the Assassin. I don't see anything strange. <coughs> Please, think more carefully about the circumstances during the President's speech. I do believe you are holding the evidence that contradicts this photo. Do I have evidence that contradicts this photo? I don't know, do I? Uh, okay, let's go over everything. Got the newspaper article. I don't think there's anything about that that contradicts this. We got the balloon. Well, we don't see the balloon here, but I don't think we should. The tape recorder, maybe? Maybe the fact that we can't see Nicole from here. That is pretty odd. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what they're driving at, though. But that's okay. That's like a potential thing. That I don't think I can see. Let me just look at the photo real quick. The actual photo. Well, it's kind of hard to tell. But I really can't see... 
Yeah, I don't... I, I don't think I've seen a coal here. And she should be right next to him because of the tape recorder. I'm, like I said, I'm not sure if that's what they're getting at. At least yet. Okay, so we got the bullet's trajectory. She was probably stood on the left side of the audience area, which is not odd. Uh, yeah, we can prove that this photo is not, like, mirrored because of the positions of the bodyguards. Okay, so moving on. Security plans showing their positions, top secret information. We all already used this, so I don't think this is it. Found trash can, two shots have been fired, a laser pointer is attached. That's not really contradicting it either. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like they could think it could be a bunch of stuff. Even though to really be like close enough to hear what they're saying, she should be like right up next to them, I think. In a crowd. Or maybe I don't know, maybe they were the only ones talking and everybody else was listening. Or maybe they were talking pretty loud, I don't know. The raid raincoat inside. Stained with blood, the red hooded figure's left arm is injured. I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, it could be a bunch of stuff. Really, it depends on like how they want to take it. But I don't know, maybe the fact that the raincoat isn't muddy, since it's really muddy right now. But he could just say that, like, we could just say that the raincoat is muddy because it was stuffed underneath underneath the ice cream stand. Also, the fact that it's muddy doesn't seem to be, like, a really big issue. The criminal is holding the gun with, with his left hand. How can you tell? I was thinking about that, but it really seems like it's with his right hand. I mean, I don't see... How can you really tell? The angle shows that it's in his left hand? Really? I think that it actually seems like it's from his right, since it seems to go... Since the portrait seems to go right to left. Uh, so it seems to me that way, but it could be that I'm wrong here. So what should I show? Because he's hiding it? So what should I show to prove that it's uh, with his left hand. He has to angle the gun across his chest. Well, if he's doing that, then it would still go left to right, in my opinion. Show the coat? Okay. Let's see if you're right. Uh, okay. Take that! Honestly, I'm not sure, but I'll present this. Mr. Edgeworth, is it really okay to present evidence you're not sure about? In times like this, maybe you should hold back, sir. Hmm. Yes, that's right. I didn't mean to go this far. It's a shame, but you should just accept your mistake and try again. Okay, one down. Ugh, not good. The photo shows the chief, Mr. Payne, and the person in the red hood. And this was taken during the president's speech. I should think this over. I think I'm going to present the tape recorder. And it's going to be that we don't see... Uh, Nicole. Since, because of the way he said, like, we see the president, pay, um, we see the chief, the, the shooter, and Payne. And it sounds like he's implying that someone's missing, so I'm gonna try that. Contradicts this photo. Uh, let me give it a shot. Let's see. Take that! No, I was right too. Oh, shit! What happened during the speech? I missed that part last time. Not much. He was just, like, talking, and re he referred to, like, the events of the first game, saying that he's happy that the smuggling ring is gone. And... He's happy that the smuggling ring is gone, and then that he... Uh, and that's it. And then he was shot. It can't be. There's a contradiction between this photo and the tape. It seems you've noticed. Well, maybe I'm. Maybe it's not what I thought about, though. Maybe, like, the tape shows something else. What does it say exactly? Maybe that's what I missed. 
there's a reason for my visit. The president passionately addressed the crowd. He's deflamed the rumors flying around about recent decline in his approval ratings. Uh, according to the schedule, there's a meeting after this. He seemed quite pleased that the radical Rossi incident has been resolved. The president raises his fist in the air. The atmosphere here is boiling to a fever pitch. The hammer of the shift shall be brought down upon all evil. Bang, bang. I don't see anything in the text itself that contradicts it, but I hope they don't ask me to like pinpoint it. Mr. Edgeworth, what's going on? Is there a person... Oh, there's a person missing from this photograph. Huh? Who is it? Yes, it's rather strange. Someone who should be there, but is not. The person who should be in this photo is... Well, let's see if I was right then. Age 20, gender female, a reporter covering the president's welcoming event, seeking a scoop. Take that! Huh? Miss Swift? Why would you say that? Mr. Payne's voice was recorded on Miss Swift's tape. He was whispering quietly with the chief prosecutor. Oh, he was whispering quietly. There we go. Now, those are the folks... If those are for the folks standing in front of me. I reckon it was the two older men. Oh, they kept on whispering to each other. It seems Miss Swift was near Mr. Payne when she recorded the speech. And she even said that they were in front of her. Which I didn't remember, but it's even more suspicious. Could it be? Uh, but she isn't anywhere in this photo. Could it be that Miss Swift is just her alibi, and, this, and John Doe is completely fucking innocent, and they just, like, threw us a curveball and played us really well? That is correct. Now, Mr. Prosecutor, who is that one you should be pursuing? <sighs> Nicole Swift, would you mind giving us your testimony? Oh, come on. It feels weird when you talk on former like that. Sorry, I, I mix it up with a British one sometimes. It's fine. I ain't got nothing to hide. If Doe is innocent, he's gonna come in later in the game. Well, we'll see. The Swift's testimony. It ain't like I stayed in one spot while I was recording. I was moving around the audience area, shuffling here and there. I reckon this picture must have been snapped at a diff different time to my tape recording. So quit making that scary face. It ain't what you think. Miss Swift's tape recorded a conversation between my colleagues. Mr. Payne and the Chief Prosecutor. Why would Nicole be lying? That would mean... It mean Nicole Swift is the assassin, pal. Oh, you're right. Wait, wait. We see him with a raised fist. He raised his fist like right before he was shot. Is he with his fist raised there? Oh yeah, he is. Specifically points out the raised. Fi oh, you're right. You're absolutely right. Well, we got her. Now we just need to find where to present that evidence. We all gotta be kidding. I ain't done nothing like that. Be that as it may, however, there is still contradiction in your testimony. Huh? I reckon so, no sir. It appears I must review this contradiction with evidence. Okay. So as usual, we're gonna press everything. I didn't. I don't remember if she said anything specific. Uh, maybe the part about saying how uh, this photo must have been taken at a different time. But let's press everything just to be sure. Hold it! You were moving around while you were recording. Why were you doing that? Huh? What do you mean, why? Surely, when. Recording a speech, it is best to remain still. 
that, well, you know the importance of covering a story from every angle? Like, he's surprised she doesn't just up and confess. Well, no, I think he's just, like, being very methodic. If there's one thing that Edgy is, it's methodic. He has his system of working, and that's just the way he goes. I wanted to convey the live and breathe an event in print. Yes, sir, you betcha. If you were moving around, I doubt your tape would have picked up anything coherent. Well, it's like I done said. I was moving around the audience area, shuffling here and there. Hold it! Here and there. Could you be more specific? Such as this side you were on. No, when I say here and there, it means just that. I was all about the place. Oh, you couldn't swing a dead cat in that crowd. You expect little old me to remember where I was? Could you at least remember if it was the left or right side? L left, I reckon. The person in the photo is also on the left side. Is this just a coincidence? This has been snapped at a different time. There we go. I think this is where we need to present, but let's see. Hold it! So you're saying that it is logical that you can't be seen in the photo? Yep. I was near that prosecutor when his voice got recorded. But I reckon this picture must have been taken when I was far away. No, ain't no doubt about it. Ain't nothing wrong here, as far as I can see. So you're saying that the photo and the recording were taken at different times? Don Tootin, it ain't about the equipment, it's all about the timing. What if they were both taken at the same time? If I can prove that, her entire testimony will collapse. Well, seems like you're right, Drops, and seems like that's exactly where we need to show this. Uh, and... Well, yeah, the tape. Has to be the tape, right? Or, wait, do we show the tape or do we show the photo? Since she's talking about the picture... Actually, I'm not sure. I think it's a tape, since she mentions the, the fist, like you said. If it's not one, it's gotta be the other, so... OBJECTION! <laughs> Detective drops. Miss Swift. A reporter shouldn't lie. I ain't lying. I'm an honest journalist. Perhaps. But there's no denying that the photo and the recording were taken at the same time. Oh, that's so. And what makes you say that? The truth lies in these photos. This photo could only have been taken at the same time as your recording. Which spot shows that this was taken at the same time as the recording? Right this one. Take that! Can you see the president with his fist raised in the air? <laughs> what about it? Miss Swift, might we hear your tape one more time? Uh, no, uh You ain't gonna hear what? Where you been treating me? Would you rather we charge you with an obstruct with obstruction of justice and seize it from you? Uh, f fine. You win. I'm no match for you, Mr. Prosecutor. The question is, during which part of his speech did the president raise his fist? No matter what sort of heinous criminal organization there is, I will not allow them to exist. The president raises his fist in the air. The atmosphere is boiling to a fever pitch. Aha! Uh -huh. Raises his fist straight from the horse's mouth, sir. This tape was recorded at the moment the president raised his fist overhead. And before she says, like, so what? He does it all the time. Like, he raises his fist all the time when he talks. Then that means... Nicole not being in this photo is really strange. Oh. But she is in this photo. Right here. 
the person in the red hood. It was you, Nicole Swift. Ah! Oh shit, a trap, sna or trap snapped. You're the real assassin, aren't you, pal? Th that ain't so. Ah, uh, I... I never wore that red raincoat. Hmm. This red raincoat in question belongs to... Oh, hold on. Let me look at this again. I suppose it's possible that... I know, either she did wear it, or the red coat does belong to Mr. Doe. And she's just hiding her. That's... it's... I don't know. Like, judging from the angle, it's kind of hard to tell. Like, I, I could believe that he's just hiding her. If she, especially if she's shorter than him, which I think she is. And if she didn't have, like, her big-ass backpack and everything. The coat I have is not hers? Yeah, that's John Doe's, right? But the button is from her coat. Interesting. Well, I'm gonna try. The raincoat's owner is Mr. Doe. That much has been proven. Right, because it was bleeding. You were wearing something else. A different red hood. You mean there were two red hoodies, sir? Mr. Doe's last testimony was true. But we didn't find any other raincoats! What Mr. Doe saw was a red hood, not a raincoat. Miss Swift, what was it you told us earlier about your Parker? Hmm? Oh, you mean when I, was, when I said I'd worry about it getting all dirty? It's reversible, so all I gotta do is turn it inside out and- ah! As I thought. Mr. Edgeworth, the inside of her parka is red! Oh, that's true. I never would have noticed that, but you can see the edges in her profile pic. Indeed. And during the incident, she was using that side. What? Hey, pal! What's the big idea? You're wrong. I've never been wearing... I've been wearing it like this the whole day. Well, then... Will you allow me to examine your Parker? What are you expecting to find? You know it was raining prior to the president's speech. I believe you said earlier... Well, I don't use raincoats or umbrellas. Come rain or snow, all I need is my trusty Parker. If you really didn't turn your Parker inside out... Then the inside should be dry! Hang on a minute just now. I ain't taking off this heavy backpack and putting it back on again. S -s Sorry, but can't we do this another time? You think you can fool Mr. Edgeworth with that, pal? Uh, uh, uh. Alright then, pal. If we're really wrong, prove it. Show us the inside of the parka. Ah. Uh. It was me. I know assassin. Miss Swift, if you want me to believe that, then you need... Sorry. Then you need to cooperate with us. Will you please tell us why you wore the red side of the parka? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Prosecutor. Uh, I had my reasons. Honest. I'll tell y'all everything. Just quit bullying me. Wait, who's holding it? Who's holding it? Who, whose voice was that? Hold on a sec. It's a little too early for the end game. Oh! Well, I wasn't expecting, uh, Knightley in here. Okay. Hey, you in the fancy suit. I don't know, I'm just... I'm, if you got an idea or a request for a voice, uh, just hit me up. Haven't you been jumping the gun ever since your opening move? 
This man was in case photo. Whoa. Guess I should introduce myself first. My name is... Okay, we get it. Horace Knightley. President's bodyguard. Second in command of his personal security unit. Revolver Ocelot! <laughs> Watch it, pal! That's not a toy! Whoa, my bad. He just wants to come out and play. Can't seem to help it. Why do you have a gun if you're not a police officer? She's a lady of Zheng Fa. Only the president's bodyguards are authorized to use it. But I thought he didn't bring bodyguards from Zheng Fa? That's weird. Anyway, back to business. I've got some news for you. There's good news, and there's bad news. Which do you want to hear first? I wonder if that means that Knightley is also a psycho. It makes no difference to me. Do as you wish. You're sure? I'm giving you the first move. Alright, I got you. I'll start with my pawn. Seems you enjoy chess. Oh, we're gonna have the chess mini game. Good. I love that one. It's a new edition. Drops. I don't think you've seen this one. You play too, Mr. Fancy Suit. No, there's a chess. Uh, there's a, sort of a chess themed mechanic now in the game. It's something they added just for this. I haven't seen it in any in any of the previous games. So I think that's also why they have so many uh, me chess metaphors. Miss Edgeworth, and I do have a fondness for chess. Is that so? Well then, Chess Master Edgeworth, I'll start with the good news. The president's safe. Not even a scratch on him. Really? That's great, pal! It seems that the young lady was not a murderer after all. Oh, there was actually a guy, a Longimas, who showed up a while ago, and we just had like a, a talk about chess. He used to be here a lot, but he kind of went away. He's French. Uh, but yeah, he popped by, and somehow we got t to talking about chess, and he like loves the game. Just popped up in my head now. Good for you, Nicole. B -b but uh. Whoa, there. Don't forget, you're still the bad news. Prison is safe because his bodyguards protected him. Actually, I had nothing to do with it. It was the leader who protected him. At the cost of his own life. That would be the other bodyguard. Brooke, was it? Yeah, that's right. Rook died to protect the president. <gasps> what? Is that so? Rook is dead. Uh, what a shame. Something here is definitely fishy. It's almost too convenient. He was the best character. Yeah, we got way too attached to him. Uh, best husbando is dead. It's always like that in these Japanese games. That means... Nicole... Means that the little lady killed him, my brother in arms. Th that ain't true. I know murderer. Whoa there. Pipe down, little Miss Murderer. <gasps> Jeez. Even if we had to make a sacrifice to protect the king. It was a pretty bad move. That castling. Sacrifices in castles? What's he talking about, sir? They're all chess terms. He's saying Rook's life was exchanged for the president's. This guy sure talks funny, sir. A more psycho voice? I thought I'd give him, um... Really? It doesn't seem that unhinged to me right now. But, yeah, I... Okay. So to give him, like, a more evil voice. Horace Knightley, was it? What do you want? 
I'd like to examine the victim's body as soon as possible. And if it's possible, I'd like to question the president. Sorry, but I can't let you do that. W what? I got another piece of news for you. And this one's a doozy. There's another piece of news? From here on out, this investigation will be handled by the Shengfa police. What? What's going on, pal? This case is under our jurisdiction. You have no right to interfere. <laughs> You're Prosecutor Edgeworth, right? The President knows about you solving the Yadagorasu case. I'm honored. That's why the Chief Prosecutor designated you to be in charge of the case. It seems the Chief Prosecutor made a little appeal to the President. But... <laughs> looks like you're the wrong guy for the job. I didn't know you'd have this kind of reaction. It's the President's orders. If you, if you oppose, you'll cause an international incident. Capiche? Hey, little lady, get over here. We'll continue your questioning inside the president's plane. You know, I wonder. It might be an inside job. And Knightley is covering for her or something. I don't know really. Even though, well, no, the president wasn't killed. So, if it was an inside job, inside job, it was a pretty bad one. No, ah, uh, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> hey now, don't be a baby. You're scared of a little Shangfa justice. Oh, Mr. Prosecutor, please, please help me. Miss Swift. It's clear that Miss Swift was the person in the red hood. However. That doesn't mean that the whole truth has been revealed. You know, for a tutorial case, this is uh, pretty fucking impressive. And long, too. Like, pulling a twist and all that? That's not sort of something you have to do at a... Uh... What's it called? At a tutorial case, not at all. It could be really straightforward and going on the main uh, game. I really didn't do it. Please believe me. Is it really alright for it to end this way? All I see is a girl with eyes full of fear, pleading for help. Certainly not someone who's committed a heinous crime. If I stand aside now and do nothing, the truth will be lost to the darkness. that what the you what the shit silence what the is an impolite way to greet someone okay what a twist a twist on a twist your neck injury has hit you here and you've already forgotten Not you. Not now. It seems you've remembered. Hey! What are you doing? Cut it out, pal! You've got some nerve to do that right in front of a president. Uh, uh, right in front of a detective and a prosecutor. Stop. Stay out of this. He's out of your league. Mr. Doe, who on earth are you? I'm not merely a simple ice cream salesman. He's a professional assassin. His name is... Shelly the Killer. Oh my god, I remember his name. We were talking about him in the first game, maybe. I guess. I mean, his name is really familiar. I guess he must have been mentioned in the first game. Shelly the Killer? 
There's no one in law enforcement who doesn't know the name The Killer. An assassin who will carry out any request without fail. He was once involved in a case I handled. Oh, that's why I remembered it. Probably from the last game. It's been a while, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Although, I do believe this is our first face-to-face -face meeting. The real assassin was you all along. That is correct. I received a request from a key individual. Do you take the president's life? I should have seen his face before the before in the case files. Curses. I was careless. I'm glad I had a knife inside my bandage before I entered the park. Oh, that's actually pretty clever. Even though my calculations were a little off. Now, Mr. Knightley, shall we play that game you love so much? Of course, the stakes will be your life. What are your demands? I want you to relinquish investigative authority back to Prosecutor Edgeworth. Investigative authority? What are you playing at? I simply want you to allow Edgeworth to continue his investigation. Huh? Why do you want that? Rook is an opponent who is connected to me by fate. I would like to discover the truth about his death. Oh, interesting. Wait, so he, so he hasn't done his mission yet? This is actually a really interesting uh, turn of events. So, he hasn't killed anyone yet. Well, can we prove it? He says he didn't have a... This is really weird. Could there? Could it be that there were two assassins? And hello, Pama. How are you doing, man? When that man died, the investigative authority was transferred to you. I am simply asking you to give it back to this prosecutor. With your life at stake, this... Really isn't the time to be stubborn? Why you? You're just using the investigation to get close to the president. Just returned home from where? University? Work? Oh no, you work from home, don't you? Since you write. And what if I am? Indeed, in order to continue the investigation, it is necessary that we enter the president's plane. As the leader of the president's bodyguard, I won't allow it. Oh, I thought you were only second in command. Now that Brooke's gone, I'm in charge. Pizza with oh fuck, that sounds good. Drops. I wish we had that here. Actually, maybe we do. No, I don't think we do. I'm not sure if you're as capable as Rook was. What are you saying? I'm totally the leader now. Very well. In that case, please exercise judgment befitting of a leader. You can lose your life here needlessly, or will you allow the investigation to continue? <laughs> He's using the investigation as an excuse. Why would he go to all that trouble? What is this man thinking? Prosecutor Edgeworth, I trust you have no objections. Let us continue the investigation. Curry sauce? Oh, well, I can't eat spicy shit at all. I'm that white, so... Mr. Edgeworth! What should we do, sir? For now, we have no choice but to accept his proposal. At least we'll be able to investigate. But... Listen well, detective. I'll use the investigation to buy us time. Meanwhile, gather up all your men. Surround the president's plane so that he can't escape. Right. Roger that, sir. To be continued. Right now. 
Let's continue. The death of the bodyguard, Ethan Rook, and the arrival of Shelley the Killer. A new development in this case has come to light. Under Knightley's direction, the door to the President's plane was opened. After the paramedics attending Mr. Rook left, we set foot inside the plane, one by one. It's really, like, not a good idea, though. Hold on. So yeah, I think it's really a bad idea to have a killer, like an extremely professional killer, an infam a really infamous killer, who said that he was sent to do uh, to kill the president and that is known to always complete his job into the president's place. Like we could have just kept those two outside, I think, and sent Edgeworth inside to continue his investigation. Oh well. Oh my. Sunken Duncan, how you doing, man? Oh, he's got an ad. I'll wait a second then. Surprising post for a guy to die in minutes after he was shot. Well, maybe he was writhing in pain. Drops. And that's just how, like, he was in a lot of pain, just, like, writhing around on the floor. And that's how he died. I don't know. Duncan, it obviously doesn't work. You should get um, Adblock Plus. I use it and I never get any ads. Never. So, highly recommend it. Uh, it's good. Dunk, good to see you. I never got a chance to uh, thank you for your stream earlier. Did you finish the game, by the way? Did you manage to finish uh, Emily Wants to Play? Or where was the gangbang too much? Who am I? Where would the president be? Who knows? Is that a spacesuit next to Nicole? Oh, I guess it is. Looks like it. Maybe it's a, it's an airplane that doubles as a spaceship. I don't know. And you died like 14 seconds in. Ah, oh, that sucks. Are you gonna do another stream of it though? You're gonna try to complete it or just move on? Because I could tell you were pretty frustrated with the final... with the final thing. It seems he's just behind that door. Still a coward, I see. Okay, awesome. You think he just... Oh. You think he just show himself in front of a hitman? Ha 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 ha! Not a chance! Didn't I tell you already? My purpose here is simply to investigate the case. Well then, Mr. Prosecutor, we await your examination of the body. Right. For now, I have no choice but to obey and continue the investigation. The rest is up to Detective Gumshoe. I'm counting on you. Disillusioned? Why disillusioned? You, th you expected more? The attempted assassination of the president became the murder of a bodyguard. <laughs> Looks like you could use some help, Mr. Edgeworth. Well, I don't deny it, but... See? Exactly! If that's the case, then it can't be helped! Just leave it to the great thief, K. Faraday! Right. So, are you saying you can solve this case? Nope! Said with such certainty. I just realized I was just going to completely come down to luck. Yeah, pretty much. At the final part, there's a lot of luck involved. It also seemed that way to me. But to be fair, it seems like a pretty simple little indie game. Like, maybe your expectations were a bit too high, but I agree that like making it so much on... They could have maybe, I don't know, put... Um, the, the, like, I don't know, calculated how the different dolls and toys should uh, show up. 
so it doesn't like fuck you up completely so you still have a chance. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying on that end. Instead, I'll stick to being your support! Right! Let's get straight to the investigation! So she's replacing Gummy now. We need to buy time for the police to prepare. I need to draw out this investigation for as long as I can. So does that mean I should just like not advance and not find anything useful? Okay. Well, I guess the body is the first thing we should look at, even if we are trying to uh, delay the inevitable. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. What game series is this? Uh, Phoenix Wright. It's quite, he's the, like, uh, well, the Ace Attorney series. And the Phoenix Wright sub-series, which is the main one, he's the main antagonist, usually. But this is a spin-off series where he's actually the protagonist. And it's really fun. I'm really enjoying it. Whoops. The bullet pierced his body, just below his armpit. Bullet that pierced through... That's really weird. That doesn't go right with, uh... With the trajectory we found out. Unfortunately, he was hit in an area his bullet professed didn't cover. It really seems like a well-aimed shot! The cause of death was most likely blood loss. The bleeding has stopped. I've seen notes jotted down more organized. Cause of death, blood loss from a bullet wound in the chest. Bullet passed through his body. The paramedics were called to treat Mr. Rook, right? I'm afraid they didn't make it in time. Okay, what else? It keeps... Okay, I'll just... I thought it was his wallet or something. I guess I'll use my uh, D-pad for this. Uh, well, I'm kind of interested in his gun, too. Seems the victim also carried a gun. Did he try to shoot something? He may have drawn it out instinctively to return fire. We need to check to see if the gun was, has fired any bullets. Good thing it's a revolver. Hmm. It's still fully loaded. There's no evidence of any shots being fired. This gun is also from Zhang Fa, right? Ah, uh, yeah. We were always issued with the same model revolver. Hasn't fired a single shot, manufactured Zhang Fa, a six shot revolver. Much like the one we found, which means the killer could possibly from, be from Zheng Fang. Okay, got the suitcase, of course. Yeah, probably. That's what I also think drops. And we know he said something, we, there was some talk about like the fact that he... Well, at first they actually said that he didn't bring his own bodyguards. I, I, I probably missed something, but they said that like he didn't trust that... Or maybe for the event, they hired like a private uh, security company. Because he felt like he couldn't trust it and his uh, approval rating was going way down in Zhang Fa. So this could definitely be like someone from home trying to kill him. This is a bulletproof attaché case. It's two bodyguards used to protect themselves from bullets. I've never actually seen a bodyguard in real life carrying a suitcase, though. I think it's just like a Japanese trope, because I've seen it in one or two more uh, Japanese series or movies or something, I think. It can't be seen in case, in case photo. It seems Rook and Knightley both had one. Oh, shake case data, John down Okay. Uh, that's the scene I stole on film! You didn't do anything illegal in taking this. Anywhere, anytime! I'm always in the mood to steal! Well, no, I imagine bulletproof suitcases could exist. It's just that I, I've never seen them as like, um, like a bodyguard thing. 
a standard bodyguarding tool or something. You just wanted to use the word steel, didn't you? Hehe, <laughs> have I been caught? Okay, anything else I should uh, pay attention to here? I don't know, his glasses are still on. His shoes, I don't know. Anything else about his... Oh, maybe there's something in his hand. Let me just... Well, from what uh, the killer said. Oh, right, right, right. Wait, I think I'm. No. Never mind. I thought I remembered that Shelly, the killer, though, once talked to him using a walkie talkie in court, I think. It might have been the, uh, in the main Phoenix Wright series. I'm not sure. Anyhow, from what uh, the killer said, it seemed that. It was some other run-in with him or something that he caused it, since he seemed to be taunting him about it. The victim is Ethan Brook. He was the president's bodyguard. After hearing the gunshots, he immediately evacuated the president into the plane. He gave up his life to fulfill his duties. Does this mean he'll receive a, post a posthumous promotion? Okay. There's no need for forced comments. How did you know? Polygons don't follow that promotion system. Okay, well I'm kind of feeling like maybe we found everything. Let me look at what logic we have. Assassination attempt, the president was targeted during a speech. This was likely a premeditated crime. The bullet that pierced through the bullet went straight through the victim's body. Where did it go? That's a good question, actually. Rook's gun hasn't fired a single shot, manufactured in Zheng Fa, a six-shot revolver, and also a six-shot revolver, a gun that is prohibited in this country. I wonder if these two could be connected. I'm gonna try. Let's see if this works. Oh, also my health is back to full. That's great. These two guns, they're the exact same model. These guns came from Zheng Fa. This is revolver data updated in my organizer. Okay, that's good. Looks like all the bodyguards were provided with guns from Zheng Fa. Indeed. Are those guns rare? No, not particularly. They're not easy to obtain domestically, but it isn't impossible either. What? I thought they might be a treasure! Yes, it's unfortunate. Huh? Mr. Edgeworth, are you talking about treasure? Not quite. If it was a rare model, I would have been it would have been easier to identify. Even evidence can become treasure. I see. Even during your investigations you search for treasure. <clears throat> Sorry, I need some water. Well, I didn't quite say that. Okay, let's investigate. Where's the treasure? And suddenly she's motivated. Okay, so that's... I don't think we can connect the other two pieces we got. This is an attempt and both the pierce through. I don't see how these two are connected, so we're gonna skip them from now. for now. I think we can go back. I feel like we've looked at everything in there. Uh, what about this thing? It's an assortment of protective gear, from bulletproof vests to hazmat suits. Oh, maybe it's a hazmat suit and not a spacesuit. Oh. Wow! There's even a spacesuit! The president seems to be very protective of himself. But what happens if he gets shot and then gets exposed to the poison gas? And then on top of all that, he gets ejected into space! He would probably wear everything that you see here. That would be a sight to see. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Can I look at these? It's an inflatable lifeboat with an oar sitting on top. Oh, it's an oar. I didn't realize that. Looks like it's ready to be used at any time. Hey! There's only one oar! Well, I guess you could try to paddle with your hands. Or you could just just use the ore with one ore, that's possible. Oh, hold on, I just noticed something here. 
What about this? The screen over here. The internal and external views of the plane are being monitored by these monitors. Wait, so maybe we can see... Was Is there a recording of like what happened beside, outside of the plane? Punch rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Well, first of all, I gotta check this out. I'm not even sure what this... A blue snack bar, a blue snack bar. Hey, chairs, how you doing, buddy? How are you? What's this thing? Oh, that's the president's precious stuffed animal. I don't really get it, but it's some kind of keepsake. Don't touch it! Precious? That's unexpected. Hey, it kind of looks like there's been a break-in! Nanio. I like that. Uh, I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay, Chairs. Enjoying this game so far a lot. Indeed, the area it stands on does does look a bit unnatural. Hmm? Are those glass shards underneath the stuffed animal? This unnatural empty space. Perhaps... Was there, other, was there another monitor here? Security monitors, data jotted down in my organ. Display surveillance, videos of the plane and the surrounding area, one monitor is missing. I guess he means like the top one. Oh, wait, no. Or is this like an actual... Oh yeah, this isn't a monitor. It's like the actual doll. Okay, so that's what they meant. So what's going on here then? I thought it was a monitor looking at the stuffed animal. Yeah, I definitely did not go silent. Unless there's anyone else having troubles, I don't seem to be dropping any frames at the moment. So I think Dunk just needs to refresh, maybe. These monitors show the cockpit and the aircraft's exterior. There doesn't seem to be anything out of place. Hmm. Maybe that's it, then. Uh, if I can't look at those... Can I look at this again? It's a president's precious stuffed animal. It seems to be a memento of some kind. The shards have been have fallen underneath. Well, that's odd, but okay. Uh, yeah, I think all the others are just gonna be. Yeah, same same lines. Okay, let's head back then. Keep looking. What's this thing here? First, until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Oh, okay, so that's one bullet. This is interesting. The shards underneath it was taken out and replaced. Yeah, you're right. That's a heavy looking vest! The president's clothes must be made from some special fabric! Indeed. It's to protect against bullets. Wow! It even does that? Naturally. This is a bulletproof vest, after all. Found on top of the desk, a bullet is embedded in it. Was this the president's? I wonder. Ah! So that's what it is! This is the first time I've seen one! You could... You could have said something earlier. That really surprised me. I wonder if... There's a connection between, like, the bullet that pierced through and the bulletproof vest. I just, I didn't see if there was an exit wound on, uh, Rook. I guess I'll wait for that later. I, I'm, I'm kind of curious about this, though. Strange decoration based off some strange animal is staring at me with its strange eyes. If there's one bullet through Rook and one in the vest, then would there have been... Three shots? Well, one bullet through Rook and one in the vest. Well, no. One in the vest, one through Rook, one killing the Steel Samurai Balloon. But, supposedly you're right, but what I'm thinking is, what if... They're probably gonna talk about that, but I'm thinking, what if the trajectory wasn't actually like this? I can't show you, but it didn't come from this, but it actually came... I actually did think something like this when I first had to show the tra 
trajectory. What if the ones, like the two spots that actually went through aren't the Steel Samurai and the, um, the Flag? What if they're the Flag and the President, or the Steel Samurai and the President? And you could, I don't know, kind of mix and match, I guess. Like, it could go through the Steel Samurai and then through, and then into the Vest, and another one could go through the Flag and into... Uh, Rook's side because it also doesn't make sense that the bolt would hit his left side if the shooter was standing in the left side of the audience that also doesn't make sense so that makes me think that the shooter might have actually been maybe the shots were a distraction the shooter actually shot from the right even from quite a distance away it could have been like a sniper or something I don't know there could be some sort of uh it could have been, I don't know, some sort of distraction, and maybe like there was another shooting, a shooter shooting uh, with a silencer or something, or from far away. I don't know right now, but something you definitely like. There's a lot of missing pieces. I feel at the moment. I'm not really sure what's going on right now. There's a lever on the statue. See, right here on its butt. That would be most unforgivable. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean anything by it. That lever most likely operates the trap door underneath my feet. Then, that hatch is actually a pitfall trap. That's a really odd thing to put in a plane. And I wonder if it'll also like play into this thing. I hope you understand. It would be in your best interest not to pull that lever. When a killer talks about your best interests, it would be wise to do as he says. Okay, I guess not, not a major thing. What about this file? Are these some kind of official documents? I know it's a bit rude, but let's take a peek inside. Okay, March 19th. Hold on, this is March 19th, and what do I have? March 24th. So these are the updated plans, and those are the original or, original or outdated plans. Hmm. This seems, to be a this seems to be a security plan. Oh yeah, it seems that the entire area was supposed to be different. Right? Like, over here we think they take into account the... Oh no, the stage looks exactly the same actually, so never mind. This seems to be a security plan. They were on the other side, you're right. And they had a bunch more peeps. Yeah, that's true. We must be able to repel any attack from the lake. The prison is our top priority. Undercover agents to keep an eye on the audience. And apparently there weren't undercover agents. Or not the, none that we know of, at least. So I wonder what caused the, the change. Ah, this looks like the one we found earlier in the trash can. Yes, it does. But, what's this? Something seems out of place. Well, first of all, this. To me. Well, yeah, and I'll present this. That should be already something. Eureka! Look! There's a clear contradiction here. Oh, uh, don't tell me they don't see it. <laughs> the ink is smudged! Just joking. Here, right? The printing alignment is a bit off. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to work harder at following your lead. Oh, come on! No, it's fine. It's not your fault. I should think this over once more. Well, I don't know. I guess if he doesn't notice that, then I guess I can, uh, I don't know, maybe mark one of them and show the photo? Let me try that. Contradiction, and let's... I think I can present this, right? Since we can clearly see in this photo that they're opposites. Oh! Nice one drops. 
that's probably right. You know, I wonder, maybe that would explain why she was with a gun, with a laser sight, on the left side. And why she shot two bullets. Maybe she was, I don't know, maybe she thought something was up, or I don't know. She saw the laser, she was shooting at the right. No, she couldn't have seen the laser since the laser was on her gun, maybe. I know, but that's definitely a good lead. It's definitely a good direction. That's why she had the Zheng Fa gun and the security plans, you're right. But why did she dump them, though? Interesting. But yeah, that's that's a really good point. Ch uh, not chairs, your super drops. That's a really good point. I, w I wonder how this will go. Anyhow, I think we can show the photos. Eureka! Oh, again? Come on! What am I not... I'm overthinking things again, probably. What am I not doing right? I should think this over once more. Something with a logic, maybe? I don't know. Assassination attempt, bulletproof first, bullet that pierced through. I don't think now's the time to... Maybe these two, but I don't think now's the time to do that. Okay, let's go over everything again. Newspaper. Is there a date here? No, so I can't really use this. I really feel it's either the date, or the reverse places, or I don't know. It could be a bunch of stuff, really. Like, there's a bunch of stuff different here. Definitely, it's obvious. And I can't show anything without deducing. Try to highlight they have different positions. I think it could be either the date or the positions. But how do I show that? Like, if I try to do... Shows the bodyguard's positions, top secret... Well, yeah, that's what they're saying here, so it makes sense that it would be that. Crime scene notes... Approved attaché case... Security monitors... But I did that earlier, and then... Well, maybe I sh Oh, you mean I shouldn't have shown the... The photograph. Then show the security plan. Okay, let's try that. You could see in the in the photos though too that it's not what happened in practice, but whatever. No, I did it twice. First time I marked the date, second time I marked this and showed the photos. I failed twice, see? I'm missing two uh, chunks of health. But okay, let's try this instead of the photos, I'm up for that. Eureka! Oh, well, there we go, yeah. That's, I feel that's dumb. Because I could have, like, you can see in the photos that that's not what happened in practice, too, but whatever. What's this? The details of the security plans were changed. Huh? Ah, you're right! Yeah, that's right. It was changed yesterday. President's orders. So limitations? Not really. If you can have, like, one of them... If you can have one of the pieces of evidence show that, you can have the other one, too. Maybe they were just... Maybe it's a translation or something. Maybe it's just that they didn't make it clear enough that I need to show the relation to the newer security plans that we already have. And not just in general. Or maybe I didn't get that. Whatever. Let's just move on. Why the sudden change? Because... Two days ago, the killer attacked the president. Oh, and that's how he has his neck brace. He disguised himself as a bodyguard. Brooke was the first to notice. He had already gotten close to the president. Well, what's going on here? Oh, okay, he attacked him. And that's Rook over there. Rook managed to stop him just at the nick of time. Rook grabbed his left arm and twisted it. Then he fired one bullet, square into his left arm. What are you doing? What were you doing at that time, Mr. Knightley? Uh, I was. If I remember correctly, the first person I took out that day was you. Oops! Was that a touchy subject? 
Shut up! So, back then... Your neck injury has it to here, and you've already forgotten. No. Not you. Not now. Since that day, I haven't been able to turn my head right. It sucks. Do you think that I would suffer an injury? Ethan Rook. You could say he was a most capable individual. Unlike this man here. What's so different about me and Rook? I believe you're about as different as a pawn and a queen. What? So you remember Rook's name because he was highly capable? Correct. While disguised as a bodyguard, I happened to hear his name. There was no way I could forget that name. Only a select few have ever been able to injure me. So this was the connection the killer was talking about? The security arrangements were changed. So that the killer would not be able to sneak in as a bodyguard again. Oh, that's why they lowered the number of them and only kept the two that they only kept two that were obvious. Okay. Only the president's two most trusted subordinates would accompany him on the stage. In short, me and Rook. Security plans data updated in my organizer. Okay. They were modified yesterday. It appears your positions were also changed. That's true! Now he's on the right side! Because I can't turn my head to the right. My position got changed to the president's left side. Oh, that's actually a good reason. In other words, I was relocated to the right side of the stage. His head couldn't turn right, plans were altered so he could stand on the right side. Hmm. Was that a logic point, or...? Piece of evidence, I'm not sure. Yeah, his position, okay. So you got the assassination attempt, the bulletproof vest, the bullet that pierced through. Oh, it pierced straight through the victim's body, so we don't know where it went. Wait, unless. Okay, just another thought. If we don't know where the bullet went, and he was somewhere. Okay, I'll, I'll use the security plans. And Rook was over there. Well, I don't know. It's kind of a stretch, but maybe if the angle was just right... I don't know. Maybe it was actually shot from the back? And then the bullet went through Rook. And... Into... I don't know. Either the flag or the Steel Samurai. Which doesn't work with this trajectory. No, the bullet is in Rook's left side, from what I saw. Well, it passed through him, so it's both, really. But it seems that the entry wound... Or at least the one that we're noticing was, like, over here. His left side. It means he must have been shot from the left, which means that the shooter had to be from the right side of the audience. Also, hey, Tombs, how you doing? Great to see you. Uh, case, is, case is going okay so far. It's really interesting. It's just a tutorial case, but it's really intense so far. Like, we had a couple of twists, things are getting complicated, it's really like much more than what I would ex normally expect from a tutorial case. Maybe it's because it's, it's a sequel and they're already expecting us to have played the game to some degree. Uh, there's also some really cool new mechanics that they added that I like. Well, one so far, but I really like it. But again, if it went straight through him, then it's kinda hard to tell we m it, it's possible though it, there might be another twist that he was actually shot from his right and the bullet exited through his left. It's a bit hard to tell. Like they don't specifically reference it. But okay, we did all this. Uh, what are these anal beads? Or vibrating eggs or whatever. It's a little collection of colorful security... Oh, sorry. sorry. It's a collection of colorful personal security alarms. They all seem to have been used before. The president? He sure is a nice guy. 
He bought these security alarms to protect his wife and kids! Then why would he leave them all here? It's obvious that they're for his own personal use. Objection! A single person can't carry that many security alarms! Because a person only has two hands! That objection is worth zero points. Okay, so that wasn't helpful. Um, I think that's all we got here. Okay. I'm gonna wait with the logic until I've completed everything here, just because I'm not 100% positive on that. A sturdy life preserver rests against the table. It is an essential life-saving tool. I suppose this is a precaution in case someone accidentally falls into the ocean. You know, come to think of it, there are a lot of fucking security measures on this plane. Like, ridiculously so, even for a president's airplane. I'd say they were probably expecting something because of uh, the killer's attempt a couple days earlier. The ocean, huh? Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, how about we go together sometime? If you want to go, just go by yourself. Aw, don't be such a party pooper. Let's go visit the ocean. Think about the hot dogs and the shaved ice. It'll be delicious. Shaved ice is also, I think, like a really Japanese thing. I don't think I've ever heard of anyone, like, you know, selling or eating shaved ice outside of Japan. You just want to go to the ocean to eat. Okay. What's all this? Well, this bird specifically. Next to the riot shield, there's a canary in a cage. In a case there's gas? Really? America has a town. What's that, Tumbi? What's so special about Italian shaved ice? Aww, it's so cute! I want one to be my partner! Partner? Of course! It can help me open locks and do other odd jobs at the crime scene! A great thief should always use nature to her advantage! Yeah, but snow cones is something different, isn't it? It's just like... It's like an ice... It's like an ice cream cone, just ice. It's not like shaved. Hawaiian shaved ice, really? Well, I stand corrected then. More of ground ice. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, I stand corrected. I've heard of canaries being used to detect poison gas. Don't tell me. Yeah, that's probably what he used them for. As well as these masks right here. Uh, I'm gonna try... I don't think I need to check the mask. Oh yeah, I can see now that there's definitely a huge trap door right here. Uh, let me try the door, though. The president is just beyond this door. This door? I'm getting a sense it's challenging me. Okay. There's no need to feel challenged by a door. But look at how big it is. All those electronic locks. It's challenging me to unlock it. Calm down and think it over. What is the purpose of a key? What's that? In Israel, they're known as Barad, which is Hebrew for hill. Oh, that's what you call shaved ice. Oh, I thought that was... Um, yeah, I never actually thought how they say it in English. Following the Spanish granizado. Sold throughout the hot summer in kiosks and... Yeah, not just in hot summers. Yeah, it's, it's some of the best. Okay, so now I understand. I just didn't know it was called shaved ice. So thanks for educating me. It's a really weird name for that, though. What is the purpose? To unlock treasure? That's right. To unlock treasure. For a mass teaching. <laughs> Was that the right answer? Okay, so that's nothing as well. Granizados are a bit meh. I know, I really love... Uh, Barad, or shaved ice, apparently. Uh, it's pretty fucking great. It's one of my favorite things. I just don't do it a lot since it tastes like poison sometimes. Well, yeah, but in intense heat, isn't that like the best fucking thing, though? When it's really hot or you're outside or something and you have some uh, fucking granizados? That's pretty fucking great. Anyhow, uh, I think 
I got these two points. I think I can do the bulletproof vest and the bullet that pierced through, maybe? I'm not sure, though. It's, but it's, I think it's my best shot right now. Okay. And... Two bullets were fired. We know that from the number of gunshots. One hit the steel samurai balloon, and the other took Rook's life. But didn't a bullet also hit the president's bulletproof vest? Right. It doesn't match up with the number of shots. However, there is one way to solve this. One way? The bullet that stole Rook's life pierced through his body and then hit the vest. In other words, Rook and the president and the president were hit by the same bullet. I see. That's right. It'd be dangerous if he hadn't worn that bulletproof vest. So wait, what, but that doesn't align with our trajectory, so what well, maybe they'll talk about it in a second. We did a free study and we did a broad overview of a few religions. Oh yeah, I remember you told me about that. Is the president alright? Even while wearing a bulletproof vest, you can still get injured. Yeah, the bullet's impact can still fracture your bones. But don't worry, he's fine. The president's trained himself like no other. Maybe the president didn't even need a bull bulletproof vest. I attended a conference of a theologian called Karen Armstrong. She said that compassion is the key of all religion. Uh, to a certain degree, I gotta say I agree. To a certain degree. I think religion is something that, uh, in part, was born out of uh, people's needs to like be together as a community, and compassion is a part of that, I think. I like to examine the bullet. There's a chance there might there may still be ballistic markings. Ballistic markings? What's that? Ballistic markings are always left on a bullet. Each gun leaves a different marking. So if we examine the ballistic markings, we'll know which gun the bullet was fired from. You could say they're like a gun's fingerprints. I get it now! Let's investigate right away! I think that'd be difficult. The bullet was completely flattened when it hit the bulletproof vest. There's no way you can investigate this ballistic markings. What? I wanted to investigate them! Bulletproof vest data updated in my organizer. Bullet was flattened by the impact. Okay. That doesn't really help me. Now then, I've grown weary of this investigation. Still no sign of Detective Gumshoe. Mr. Prosecutor, have you uncovered the truth yet? No, not yet. Uh, I see. In that case, would you like to speak with someone who is involved in the incident? Someone involved in the incident? You mean... Is there not one more witness just behind those doors? Of course. The President himself. Well, Mr. Prosecutor, please do the honors and summon the witness here. There's no chance in hell I'm letting that happen. Think you can just summon the President like a witness in court? Ha! Mr. President, I'm sure you're watching all this through the, your security cameras. Would you kindly grace us with your presence? That is, if you value your bodyguard's life. What sort of a man leaves another to die on his behalf? 
obviously an important man who has a bodyguard, like that's pretty much their job description. Mr. President! Stop it! Take it easy! Uh, hey! Still nothing. Come on, Detective Gumshoe! Ah! What? The lights! My apologies, Mr. Prosecutor, but I wouldn't try anything if I were you. It seems I am unable to reach the President. Even with Mr. Knightley's life. Stop! Ugh. You! However, I've already seen the truth. Where... where is he? Oof! Oh shit! Like a fucking badass, goddamn. I leave the rest in your hands, Mr. Prosecutor. I sure hope uh, Gumshoe is outside. Mr. Edgeworth! Or is it maybe... I don't know if it's Sam or Gumshoe. It's her Gumshoe. D Detective Gumshoe? Mr. Edgeworth! Sir! Oh, he's alive. And I think since we've arrived at some sort of a, you know, start of a chapter... Well, this is surprising. I was expecting at least Knightley to be dead. Very interesting. And it seems that the killer was not the man who killed him. Oh wait! Oh wait! I can already tell that the lifeboat and the and the um, paddle are missing, along with a pump. Hmm. Yes, it is. Of course, it is. It's uh, one of my trademarks, I think, in uh, the Ace Attorney series. But uh, unfortunately, that is all the time that I have for today. I gotta get going. I would love to keep doing this since this is really is like for especially for a first case really really interesting. They're not normally this interesting and complex uh the tutorial cases. Uh but I'm really happy this is. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh I hope you enjoyed it at least as much as I did and I hope to see you guys not tomorrow but on Friday. I'll be back on Friday same time as today. You can check on the schedule what time is it is exactly for you. I'm also going to save so I won't forget. Uh, you can, of course, already start voting on the next thing I'm going to play on my poll. The link is on my Twitch page, and you can also write exclamation point poll on Twitch chat to uh, get the link. You can only vote once, but you can add your vote anytime, and you can also add options to the poll. Um, what else? And, of course, if you enjoy the stream, feel free to follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Steam to get notifications when I start so you don't miss it. And you can also get notifications on... Uh, oh, and sorry, and you can also follow me on Twitch and YouTube to watch my past broadcasts of this and other games. So that's it. Uh, like I said, I'll be back on Friday. If maybe, maybe, big maybe, if I have time, I might do a casual stream tomorrow. I'm really not sure. I hope I'll have the time, though. Uh, until then, again, thank you, everybody. I had a great time. Thanks for the help, and thanks for the company. Thanks for uh, helping me enjoy myself. And hopefully we'll have another stream really soon on SafeStateHeroes.com. So everybody be sure to not uh, flip the channel. Uh, that's it, guys. Take care, everybody. Have a great day or rest of the week. And I'll see you soon. Marco.